All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm hoping that this is transmitting just right. And for those of you on the West Coast, yeah, it's probably still too early. I'm going to be having a unique um, coffee time moment with y'all. So if you're able to join me live, great. Otherwise, you're going to catch it on the replay. And I'm, I need to be very careful here where it's just going to mess up my, uh, my camera. I'm going to have a guest on because yeah, I put up the poll on purpose. For those of you that participated, thank you. And the poll I'm talking about is with respects to the, if you feel the threats of the CCP, which is the Chinese Communist Party, uh, are they concerning to you? Or are they not? And the poll, if you saw the poll, you can still see the results here on my Instagram stories. If you're seeing this around the time I go live, um, if you're seeing it, the concern is that most people do have a concern. But when you see the results, though, the results are people are not living in Taiwan. And those that are living in Taiwan, friends and family that I have over there, most of them feel... It's exaggerated. It's no big deal. This is uh, China just being China. Oh, the same old talking points. They don't feel that that threat. So let me see. I'm going to try to get my guest on here. Hey, Brennan, can you hear me? Andres. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Well, for a lot of people on, on my side are going to tune in a little later because they're asleep. <laughs> it's uh, not, uh, and where you are, um, you're probably going to sleep soon too, right? <laughs> because it, it's, uh, what, almost midnight in Taiwan? Yeah, it's, uh, ta hey, it's almost midnight. And um, fingers crossed I will be asleep in a minimal amount of time. <laughs> but gotcha. Not during this interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I try to do it a little earlier. I, I, I usually work um, on my show uh, between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. So that's how I, okay, so if I'm doing a late shift, I can make this happen in the morning. So I'm, I'm glad we're able to work around the crazy time schedules to make this happen. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Well, dude, I reached out to you uh, because, live from Taiwan, yeah. Well, dude, I, I reached out to you um, because you saw the poll um, that I put out there. I put, are the threats of the CCP against Taiwan? um concerning or exaggerated and for the most part most of everybody on my on my account they saw the result and thought yeah it's pretty straightforward until i explained to them that those that are saying exaggerated are people in taiwan living in taiwan and everybody that said that they were concerned are living outside of it uh, and i thought about you because when you, you were doing the wide angle because right now you're doing a, a more health focus show but when you were focused on the wide angle uh, you covered a lot of this, and it was concerning then, and it's more concerning now. But for some reason, the Taiwanese are not uh, are not really feeling that. Uh, and since you're in, in Taiwan, um, and can you come across people on the every day? Is there anybody preparing for the end of the world over there? I th I think the my my impression of the the general culture here is that it, it's it's a society where people are very focused on on their day-to-day -day lives on their work and it's a it's a very work driven study driven culture and um i think i think there's also a divide in this in the perception of this threat and also the a divide in in the kind of relationship that um taiwanese people want to have with with china which is unfortunately governed at the moment by the chinese communist party so i, I can see where there would there would be people who perceive that there isn't a there isn't a great ch threat from China and and perhaps if if other countries weren't involved if if other countries weren't signaling um, that they they would be involved like like the U S then there wouldn't there really wouldn't be much of a threat facing Taiwan whereas the, there's other Taiwanese people who perceive a significant threat I mean I just from my own experience I I was out out to dinner last year while I was visiting Taiwan and we were with a family and the two children there asked their parents if if China invades if the CCP invades can we go and stay with with these guys in America mm. so I, I think it, it 
it's there and it's it's quite it's quite prevalent this this threat but you've got to remember that it's also been hanging over the head of the taiwanese for 70 odd years this this threat of of potential ccp invasion although it albeit it's escalated significantly at this point in time it with my in-laws um when they were here recently uh we were every single year that i visited taiwan and then they came over here i would have these conversations about the what if do you have a safety net planned in case the ccp does make their move because uh, all their kids are over here now uh, they're like, in other words the future is the united states for them but to them they can't they can't visualize leaving taiwan uh, so I don't know if it's the fear of having to move from Taiwan that puts them in denial or if they're just they're just like we don't perceive that threat like they're always talking um, and even some of uh, um, the younger generation that I've spoken with up until recently um, they just brushed it off like it's like it's nothing uh, but last week um, I was able to gather up with uh, um, several guys for you know, for a friend's party and most of all of them are Taiwanese and i just brought it up because like hey guys i wanted to do an episode for my show about this for those that know um and when i asked for the first time i got a much more varied questions i mean much more varied answers where some of them were finally expressing concerns i've never seen them so invested in an upcoming election because they feel it it the, the fate of taiwan hangs on the balance and i'm like well it's it's about time you guys are paying attention, uh, but a, a part of me feels that what you, but your family over there isn't. Um, and it, I guess that led to the question that my wife and I had an exchange recently, which is, well, even if Taiwan was concerned about this, well, what can they do? Like, um, well, readiness is for one thing. It's, it's a lot of it's mental. And, and I... I just feel that there's a dependence on Taiwan that the United States is going to go out to save them. And I'm like, well, don't, don't depend on us, especially right now. Uh, but it, that, that's just been the, the general sentiment for me. Um, I haven't been to Taiwan in several years. Uh, so I, uh, based on what you, what you just uh, highlighted versus what I I've experienced. Um, I think that there is more a change, but with that poll that I just put up, not much has changed. A lot of my friends and family have been posting there and just saying, no, nah, it's exaggerated. Like, you guys still think that? I sometimes wonder if the media in Taiwan um, might be influenced by the CCP. You're in media. Do, do, you, do, you, do you feel a little bit of that? Have you seen that? I, I have no doubt there's a strong influence from the CCP in, in Taiwan, Taiwan's media. I mean, the, the CCP has an influence worldwide in, in various medias. So I, it's it's almost unimaginable that it wouldn't have its, its um, stake in Taiwan's media as well. And I, I, I my, situ my understanding of the situation in Taiwan, there is a it's kind of a cultural thing that their their political reporting commentary is it's got a, often a, quite a combative nature to it. So you they maybe this is something I, I guess the audience appreciates as well. Where you, you have one one side getting hotly um, antagonistic towards the other one and you have the the side that is is anti-ccp and you have the, the other side that you know wants a, a closer relationship with china as they as they put it and, and the ccp um no doubt has its has its influence in in many many commentators who are who are pushing that for that relationship based on just anecdotal stuff like just the people that you come across because in your case when you mentioned it there was a family and the kids like can we uh, hitch a ride with the americans on the uh, way back to the united states uh, have you felt that the generation let's say uh the, the 20s and the 30s are the ones that don't feel the threat from taiwan and it's probably i mean uh, from ccp and it's the um the, the more senior that are probably more concerned or vice versa i ask because i it's, it's like almost like the reaction of south korea um how much a generation that didn't live those threats and concerns of north korea and i was like ah, north korea is all talk it's all talk um and they don't take it as seriously i sometimes wonder if that might be the same for the generation in taiwan because uh, everyone saying that the time that ccp's threats are exaggerated are my age or younger mm. and that as that that's my general sentiment that from what i come across 
and in, in your day to day while you've been out there, um, even recently, it, have you felt that the concerns come more from uh, the older generation, or is the new generation expressing just as much? I I don't I don't know if I could divide it in that way. I mean, I've I've known I've known young people who are adamantly opposed to the CCP, young Taiwanese people. And I think you could look at the at the the protest movement in Hong Kong as a as a reference. I mean that was a that was a youth driven movement, and um, I I think that it's something in the, in the youthful spirit internationally that you see uh, you see obvious restrictions on people's freedoms and and you want to do something about it. You don't want if if you've lived uh, these young Taiwanese that they've, they've grown up in democracy. Democracy is is relatively new to Taiwan, but the people in their in their twenties and thirties they've they've basically grown up with that, mm. and they can see the potential for that to be decimated if the CCP is to is to move in on Taiwan. Uh, and you mentioned something about uh, democracy being um, newer, uh, well, new enough to, uh, to Taiwan. But uh, I lost uh, this highlighted piece that you did when you did a two part series about the defense of Taiwan. Uh, and in comparison as to what's going on between that and uh, and Ukraine, um, Taiwan has predated uh, the CCP. I'm like, well, yeah, that's true, and it's so easy to forget that. If it's, it's like, huh, and the y younger generation never had to grow up with that, which is why I always feel and I teach my children um, history because they have to learn history. If you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. So my wife asked me, well, uh, the reason they don't feel the threats from uh, from the CCP is because, well, besides the whole, you know, planes maybe threatening uh, Taiwanese airspace, um, they haven't done anything to Taiwan. I said, well, that's because they're not interested in blowing up the, the island. They want to subjugate the people. And besides the resources that Taiwan has, particularly in the semiconductor business, is what they want. And the only thing a natural barrier for them kind of like how great britain survived all those world wars without being invaded is the taiwan strait um i've heard some analysis about the the possibility if there is a land invasion why it can't just be at the whim for china it has to be around these two opportunities seasonally um and that's just too much uh for them and if it's one of your pieces too that i saw on the white angle or is it yeah but it and if taiwan Rem if remain standing and the ccp doesn't get a hold of them that they could very much see a collapse of the ccp back on china for which is why it was it, this is such a strategic thing for them it's like that's a piece of the puzzle i never actually saw and i think that's the only thing right now that that people don't realize unless they analyze it very well um but but overall i just think that taiwan needs to they the they do need to take this more seriously and they at the very least their military budget that i don't know anything about uh how much they spend they got they got triple double whatever it is and take it seriously um so that's that's been my take on 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 all this but uh, i was curious if you were on assignment out there or 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 for pleasure or both um if you came across a, a, a lot of this particularly as of late because it looks like china's been a lot more aggressive um these past few days and some people don't even know about it i i can't say personally that i've, I've seen any any specific uh, signals of that but i during a, a trip out to hualia and one of one of uh, taiwan's very beautiful tourist locations uh, on, the, on the seaside um we had i saw a jet flew over overhead um it, it was probably you know probably a taiwanese jet but it, it just occurred to me this is this is the kind of lifestyle this is the kind of situation that the Taiwanese people are are living in, where they, if you if you see that, if you hear that, you're you're naturally going to wonder: is this is this one of ours, or is this mm -hmm. is this a CCP CCP jet that's um, that's invading our airspace uh, once again? And um, what is what is the signal for the for the next the next escalation in this tension? Yeah, because I have a buddy of mine uh, who did very Taiwanese. He's he moved to Taiwan. Um, and we're talking recently. It's like, are, are you considering moving back? Because uh, he's out here in Southern California too. Is that no? If anything, he was encouraging me to move to Taiwan. I'm like, really? You, you you guys don't you guys really don't feel it? And it's like, eh, what can you do? Like, well, I mean, I, I've I've been here for a month this time around, and I'm I'm not I don't feel in a hurry to leave. It's um, 
It's interesting. I mean, Taiwan, it, it doesn't have a lot of the, the trademark uh, tourist attractions. It doesn't have, you know, the, the inspiring architecture of, of places like uh, France or even, even New York, but, um, it's, it's very comfortable here and you get, for one, I mean, you get fantastic service. The people, the people really, if you go to a restaurant, if you go to a, if you stay at a hotel, you get exceptional service. People really, they really seem to care about making sure you, you have the best experience. And, um, I think, I mean, that's a testament to the kind of, um, the mentality of that, that widely pervades Chinese, Taiwanese society. Um, it's because they've, they've had to, they've had to be very resilient because mm. they've faced this ongoing threat and they, it was, it was 2 million people having to flee, um, recently communist occupied China to, to make a new life in this, on this island. Um, so yeah. it's that, that culture of, of determination of hard work, it, it's instilled very much from what I see in Taiwanese culture. And I think that that's probably one of their, their greatest assets in, in facing the threat that they continue to face. There's this whole culture about eating and drinking. That's why it's like, it's the heart of Asia. It's the Formosa Island. Um, and it's a, it's just a place that you're a foodie it's where you want to be. And it's just so comforting. Uh, and, and I think that's like you said, the culture, the service that you get, um, it's unless you're there, it's, it's really hard for people to really experience it. Cause there's a lot of Taiwanese places here where I am. It's like, yeah, but it's, it's not the same. And it, it's to me, it's something worth preserving. Um, people do need to experience it. I, I just, I, I just wish, even though they're resilient, I believe a lot of that resilience of the people recently um, has been because they they felt the cover of the United States. Like I think it was Bill Clinton's under uh, Bill Clinton's presidency um, that to, that we had a little bit of war games over there to defend Taiwan. But other than that, I haven't heard of anything more massive than that kind of response to defend Taiwan and the threats are even worse now. So that's, that's how I've come uh, across in my short experiences with, with that. And a, a lot of what you said has uh, kind of tied into both on the wide angle and both as a, um, you know, just a passerby uh, and, and a tourist uh, that it's, I think people are waking up a little more. Um, I guess we shall soon see because the government is the one that needs to really react to all this. I, there was, I was really, I was recently reading an article from the Japanese uh, Japan Times. Um, it was an interview with a, a former Taiwanese admiral, uh, Lee Sumin, and he was saying that really uh, Taiwan is is not prepared at this point in time militarily to in in a, at any stretch of the imagination to fend off a a CCP attack. And the reality is that it is it is very much the how much of a stake uh, America and and the, the Western Western world signals that it has in Taiwan. How much I uh, like the the recent G seven. Um, it was a kind of a a mixed message again from America and from and from the G seven in terms of of where it stands with with Taiwan. I'll read a, uh, I'll give you an example. Sure. There's a clear, clear consensus among our allies, this is from, from Biden, that there will be a response if China unilaterally, 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 unilaterally attacks, takes action. So they're, they're talking about it's, it's a clear response. It's a, a clear, a clear consensus, but the the idea of a response is is somewhat vague what exactly what kind of response can we expect and it's it's this is what we come to expect from from the biden administration a where biden will say if there if there is an attack from the ccp we we will take action then a few days later you see the white house comes back and and kind of retracts the statement but i mean i, I think it at the same time that that does serve some purpose i mean it's i don't i don't think it's a a faux pas on on biden's part i think it's a probably a strate strategic move by the biden administration because they they don't want to send a clear message and you could say that this this strategic ambiguity policy has worked for for decades there hasn't been a yeah. you know there hasn't been a war so it's understandable to some degree why they continue in that in that manner this is important. I mean, it, it is significant. And there's the signaling 
the world, the signaling of America is is crucial. You can't get away from the fact in in Taiwan security at, at this point in time. Yeah, I I just think that um, as I told my wife yesterday, I just feel that uh, Taiwan, if they took an approach similar to Israel, where we have uh, two nations that are literally dependent on us, but where you have Israel, that's uh, like, hey, you know, everybody needs to get trained here because you never know. We're gonna call a man or woman doesn't matter. You hold up a rifle. You, we're gonna train you. Um, I feel that the same at the very least in Taiwan. I saw some videos, and I I re went through them recently. I'm like, is that really, um, uh, soldiers training with airsofts in Taiwan? I wanted to believe the video was fake and supposedly it was real. Like, can they not afford, or is it that you're just, just so anti gun that they wouldn't use guns to train even with real guns, or they just couldn't afford the weapons and the ammunition that they're trying to preserve? Those answers were not provided. But th that's what I mean. It's, it, 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 yeah, these are a little bit older videos. But like, uh, Taiwan, it's, they, at the very least, they're used to, like, yo, you guys got to be ready. You guys need to invest in your budgets. Um, ex expect uh, urban warfare because Taiwan, uh, if China really wanted to, they would have blown it up a long time ago. That's not what they want. They, they wouldn't do that. So uh, expect some kind of land war that they're not able to win. We don't know, but it doesn't hurt to be prepared. So that's there's been more of my like, you, need, you need air defenses, you, you need your air force, and you need your soldiers trained. Man, woman, you guys all need to do your part. So that's that's been my thing. If they have taken a more Israeli model with that in that sense, um, I think it'll work. Not so much an Iron Dome because they wouldn't need it per se, but hey, if you can, why not? And so that that's really been uh, my thing with all that. And I think uh, um, I I can't remember his name. You had Doctor Su Su Yun. I, I I I'm not good with pronunciation. Pretty name. Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> he um he actually did say that uh, on, on your on your show when you interviewed him um along those lines, i was like hey that's that's what i was saying uh so and, and i thought that was last year um so I, i'm glad that uh if, i'm trying to tell my family very very things that people very much over there and involved in strategic decisions at least have that in mind i'm just hoping that they at least allocate the budget for it and at least have done so a lot more so than uh, the past year but the next election apparently it's going to be very very interesting i'm not going to ask you about that one but uh we'll, we'll see where that goes um i'll, I'll let you have a, a last word in but i didn't want to keep any longer because uh for you it's midnight yeah well, i mean along the lines of what you're saying taiwan has invested in in that kind of like anti-air uh anti-ship missile technology uh, more off late the extent to which that will puts taiwan in a escalates its ability to, to really defend itself um there's, there's different opinions on that. I think largely it, it's the, it's the positioning of, of the U S and, um, and the global community that, that Taiwan is dependent on at this stage. I agree it does, it does need to foster that mentality of really, uh, particularly getting its, its use in the, in that kind of prepare for war mentality. And, um, I mean, just visiting a hospital here, you have all these these military hospitals because there was such a, a large military in Taiwan before. Now, mm -hmm. now I mean, these military hospitals are basically servicing civilians because there just isn't that population of military to service. Um, but um, another factor is that China may not present the, the formidable um, threat that it, it it would like the world to believe. I mean, China faces a, is facing a number of a number of problems of its own that I, I it's probably beyond the scope of, of our conversation today, but it did major economic problems was gold. Goldman Sachs recently rated it as, um, a, a estimate an estimate of China's debt at, um, one, $1.23 trillion. It's got, we've seen unprecedented protests internally in China with the, mm -hmm. the zero COVID policy. Um, we've got teachers protesting in China recently. Because they're not getting paid, it's teachers who haven't been paid for four years, which is also pointing to wow. a probably, yeah, a probably heavily concealed economic problem there in China. Is China really, really ready? Is it economically ready? Is it does it have the uh, the cohesion so socially to really to really wage war at this point? And that's that's another important consideration, I think. And um, I would I think there's many factors suggesting it's not. Mm.
Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. Uh, th there's a the the economy over there has definitely been and concealed, and that's something we can unpack Oof. and spend so much time on. But of course, we can't. So I don't want to keep any longer because uh, uh, it, it is midnight. And, um, I'm just getting my day started. You're done with yours. <laughs> well, it's been a great way to end. Good to be on. It. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming on. And uh, for those that uh, that don't know, uh, uh, Brandon he used to do the, the wide angle over at the Epoch Times, but he's now focused on health. And I'm going to ask him privately if he is doing a health segment on Taiwanese food over there. So we'll talk about that. Time. Hey, but hey, th thanks so much. Uh, keep doing what you do, man. And uh, Godspeed. Have safe travel when you come back to the States. Okay. Great to be on. Speak to you soon, Andres. Thank you. All right. Talk to you then.